Uh, if you'd like to follow along, I'm going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm just going to read two verses. It's going to be kind of strange, but that's the way this works. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. And I'm going to stop right there. Now, before I get going, I'm going to ask you a question. What would a believer do if he or she could? What would you do if you could? Now, understand, according to Galatians 5 and verse 17, I do know that ye cannot do the things that you would. But what would you do if you could? And I think I know. I started pondering on this. Somebody asked a question in a bulletin. And I think I know what a believer now would do if he could. First of all, pray. Second of all, read God's scriptures. Third, rejoice in God's providence. Fourth, sing holy praises unto our God. And rejoice in Christ Jesus. And the last thing is spend time with his people. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that we can do this, and we do now. But I think the answer to that question is, what would a believer do if he should, or if he could, or if he, she could? Is I would do this better. I would do it more often. And that's what I'd like to do. Life gets in the way, but still, we have time to pray to read the scriptures, to praise God, to sing unto his holy name, and spend time with his people. That's what I think. And to be honest, I'd like to be able to do it better. And I'd like to be able to do it more often. So, anyhow. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. And I thought, yeah, I did turn that on. This is the name that Paul gives, and the title, a description. Alexander the coppersmith, the coppersmith. Paul calls out this man in this letter to Timothy by name and by occupation. Now, I want to be clear here. We don't know for sure who this man really is. Other than his name is Alexander and he was a coppersmith, and I am assuming and most people are also, I believe it to be true, that this man was in Ephesus, because that's where Timothy was when Paul was writing this letter. He wrote it to Timothy, and he was in Ephesus. So I am assuming, and I believe, this man was in Ephesus. I also believe Paul knew that Timothy knew who he was talking about. That's why he doesn't go into any detail. Now, if you look at the name Alexander in Strong's Concordance, it'll give you a definition. And what it says is man defender. Then it says this, the name of four people in the Bible, three Jews and a guy, or three Jews and a man is what it says. So that's, that's it. There are four people named Alexander in the scripture. Now, in 1 Timothy, just for your, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20. Well, here we go. Now, verse 19. Holding faith, faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may not learn, that they may learn not to blaspheme. I don't think this is the same guy. It doesn't really matter, but it's just, you know, two of the people named Alexander Paul wrote to Timothy about. 
It's just one of these strange things. Uh, here it is, though. Because this man, Alexander the coppersmith, holds a, well, yeah, I was going to say he has a, has a bit of fame about him. He's famous. Or actually, in this case, more infamous. Because I don't know how many people have read this scripture. Who is Alexander the coppersmith? What did he do? Well, Paul doesn't tell us, but he does tell us a few things. And it's a strange and it's a very sad thing to be famous for. This epistle, I'm sure, was read by other people in that day, and eventually it may have actually gotten back to Alexander the coppersmith. I don't know. But here it is. I read these verses to you today, 2,000 years or so after Paul wrote them. And we're going to be talking about Alexander the coppersmith. Here it is. Paul wrote this to Timothy. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil, much evil. Now, Paul gives no details here. Like I said, he gives no details. He just writes it out. He did me much evil. And I also suspect from the lack of detail here that Timothy knew exactly what Paul was writing about. Timothy knew exactly who this Alexander was and what this Alexander, the coppersmith, did to Paul. Paul didn't have to tell him, so he didn't. And that is the thing. He didn't have to go into detail. He said this one thing. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me much evil much evil. And then he makes this statement. The Lord record, the Lord reward him according to his works. Now folks, that is not a benediction. That's not a benediction. It's not a pleasant greeting because here's the thing. This is not something you want to hear yourself. I don't want to hear Somebody say, may the Lord reward me according to my works. I don't want that. Because here's the thing. I know what the wages of sin is. The wages of sin is death. I don't want rewarded according to my works. Because my best works are at best filthy rags in God's sight. Don't even going to go into my, good, my bad works. My best works are filthy rags in his sight. I don't want to be rewarded by it, according to my works. Neither did Alexander the coppersmith, whether he knew it or not. Whether he knew it or not. Now, because here it is, it doesn't matter who you are. You do not want to be rewarded according to your works. But that's what Paul said for this fellow. Understand, this is not good news. Because being rewarded for your for your works is very, very bad news. Now, I'm not going to keep you long today. Paul says in the next verse, of whom be thou ware also, writing to Timothy, watch this guy. Beware also of them, of him. Beware of whom. Be aware. Pay attention, look, see, because here's the thing. Those that have done great evil, much evil to the Apostle Paul, don't like you either. Why? Because you're saying the same things I am. Oh, my. Paul warned Timothy about people. Actually, in verse 10 of chapter 4 here, 2 Timothy, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, and Titus unto Dalmatia. Demas has forsaken me. I already read uh, 
1 Timothy 1 and 20, of whom is Hymenius and Alexander. So Hymenius, Philetus, Alexander, and Demas. And who else? Paul would warn Timothy against any and all who speak and teach contrary to the gospel. Beware, watch out, pay attention. Don't give heed to those who want to talk about fables, who want to talk about endless genealogies. Don't pay any attention to them. Why? Because it's contrary to the gospel. Contrary to the gospel. Beware, watch out. But Paul here specifically points out Alexander the coppersmith. Be wary. And here he tells us the reason why. Now, like I said, he didn't go into any detail but he does say this, for he hath greatly withstood our words, our words. I remember Earl used to say he'd get, talk to you, he said, all you do is pick about words. That's what we got. Earl was a preacher. That's what he did. He spoke words. Paul was a preacher. He was an apostle, but he was also a preacher. Timothy was a preacher. What do we use? We use words, and this man greatly withstood our words. I mean, because here Paul's telling the reason for much evil, for much evil. He doesn't elaborate on it. He doesn't state what it exactly was. There's no details. We don't need them. The only reference to the much evil of Alexander the coppersmith did to Paul is this. He greatly withstood our words. He greatly withstood our words. You understand what's that mean? Alexander the coppersmith stood against and opposed our words. And not only that, this is, this is one of the things that hit me. He greatly withstood our words. Greatly. Not just opposed, greatly opposed. What's that mean? Well, for one thing, I believe it means this. Alexander the coppersmith went out of his way to oppose the gospel. That's what it means. He went out of his way. He greatly withstood, greatly opposed, greatly was against. And I can tell you what that means. Alexander the coppersmith hated the words of the Apostle Paul. And there are people today who hate the words of the Apostle Paul. And specifically, I can tell you this right now, they are so against the book of Ephesus, they, the, the, the letter to Ephesus, they like to take it out of the Bible. And I know this for a fact. I've heard them say it on TV. Paul didn't write that. It's imaginings. It came in later. No, it's the truth of God as inspired by the Holy Spirit and written down and preserved to this day. People hate it. And Alexander the coppersmith hated Paul's words. And because of that, you can tell this, that Alexander the coppersmith hated Christ and him crucified. Because that's what Paul preached. That's who Paul preached. And understand this. If you are speaking the gospel to someone, even if you're just talking in conversation, and they react with hatred, that hatred's not for you, although it is. That hatred is for Christ. It's for the Christ of the Bible. It's for the Christ we preach. It was for the Christ that Paul preached and Timothy preached. That's why he warned Timothy. You know, <clears throat> he greatly withstood our word. Not just my words, our words, the words of every gospel preacher. Because we all preach, we better all preach the same Christ. Jesus Christ and him crucified. What is it? This is only one of two times in the scripture you will find this phrase, much evil. 
This is one right here. Paul never used it for anything else. I, you know, like I said, he doesn't go into details or anything else. But the weird thing is, it's very strange when I, I found this out, because there's only two places this phrase, much evil, is in translated in the New Testament. And the other one is in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, where am I at? Verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And here it is. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. That's the only other place this phrase is used. For the Saul of Tarsus, and Alexander the coppersmith. But Christ continued, And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on the name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias said that he had heard of the much evil of Saul of Tarsus. What was Saul of Tarsus doing? He greatly opposed the words and gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he did. He was going around wanting to put believers in prison. He hated the gospel that much. He hated the Christ. Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Let me tell you something, folks. To be against the gospel is much evil. Much evil. Alexander the coppersmith greatly withstood our words. That's much evil. That's much evil. People think it's just nothing. We just have different opinions. Well, yes, we do. But it's not my opinion I'm talking about. It's facts written right here in this book. It's the truth of God in Jesus Christ. And people, people don't understand what it is to reject Jesus Christ. That's much evil. That's much evil. Strange people look at you and say, my God wouldn't do that. My God wouldn't say that. Well, here it is. It's written down. This is what he said, and he said what he meant, and he meant what he said. But they won't have it. And I'm going to tell you, folks, that's much evil. That's much evil. And if they go out of their way to cause trouble for you, that's greatly withstood your words, his words. And it's because they hate Christ. They don't know Christ, and they don't want to know Christ. And that's what Paul wrote here about Alexander the coppersmith. Because here, Paul did much evil at one time. Ah, but Paul stopped. Well, no. Better way to say it, Paul was stopped. Paul was stopped. And Christ told us in Acts 9 that he, Saul, who became Paul, was a chosen vessel unto Jesus Christ. Henry said at one time, Jesus Christ knocked Paul off his horse to preach the very words he hated. Now, isn't that something? Oh, my. To preach the, the way he greatly opposed. And Saul stopped. Saul repented and Saul heard and was taught Christ's gospel. And Saul preached. Christ's gospel. Oh, I like that. Understand, we have nothing else written about Alexander the coppersmith anywhere. This is it. There is nothing else. 
He greatly withstood the word of Jesus Christ, and that is, I'll say it right now, that is much evil. Okay? All by itself. It doesn't matter what else he did, that's much evil. Now, I do know there are commentators who say that he was one of the people in Acts chapter 19, which could very well be. But I don't know. In verse 24, there's a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, not a coppersmith, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana and brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know by this craft we've made our wealth, and Paul's causing trouble. That's what they basically came down to. Paul said, telling the people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Paul told the truth, but it was messing with this guy's job. But he gathered all the other craftsmen, and that's where they went out crying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. And then they went on with it. But the funny thing is, Paul doesn't mention a word about Demetrius, who was in Ephesus. And Alexander may have been in that group. I don't know, but I do know this. He greatly withstood the words of the Apostle Paul, and that is much evil. That is much evil. Opposing the preaching of the gospel is much evil, whether you know it or not, whether you understand or not. He greatly withstood our words. He went out of his way to oppose the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll say it one more time. That is much evil. Much evil. I can tell you this. 1 John 4 and verse 4 says this. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than it he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak, thee, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God, what? Heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. He that knows God will hear the words of the Apostle Paul and won't oppose them. They might fight against them. They might struggle against them. I'm going to tell you something. God will open your eyes to see his truth in a way you cannot deny. <coughs> he that is not of God does not hear us. I'll put it even stronger. He that is not of God cannot hear us. Oh, what's that mean? That means Alexander the coppersmith is not of God. If he greatly withstood the words, our words, the words of the Apostle Paul, the gospel of Jesus Christ, he is not of God. And he did much evil. But here's what that means means that Alexander the coppersmith was uncircumcised in heart and ears. What? Just like Saul of Tarsus before Jesus Christ met him. Alexander the coppersmith did always resist the Holy Ghost. Just like Saul of Tar Tarsus at one time. And Alexander the coppersmith greatly withstood the gospel of Christ just like Saul of Tarsus at one time. What's the difference? Saul of Tarsus was met by the Lord Jesus Christ on that road to Damascus. And Jesus Christ knocked him off his horse, blinded him, spoke to him, and blinded him and sent him on his way. And then the, the Lord Jesus Christ sent a man 
to preach to him the gospel that he hated just a few days before. And Saul of Tarsus heard and became Paul, the greatest apostle we know, the apostle to the Gentiles, who preached to what? Kings, leaders, Gentiles, and the house of Israel. He preached to everybody. Oh, my. So here's the question. Every one of us was in the same place as the Apostle Paul at one time, as Saul of Tarsus. Whether we greatly withstood or just a little bit withstood. Whether we totally denied or we sort of gave kind of a lip service to a Jesus of our own imagination. I'm going to tell you, anyway, if it's not the true Christ of God, it's much evil. It's much evil. But here it is. Do you love now the words of Christ Jesus? Do you, re you rejoice in the preaching of his word now? Now. Do you listen with gladness in your heart when you hear his words proclaimed? He or she knows that knows God hears the words of Christ. They'll hear the words of God. And he that is not of God doesn't hear us. Does not hear us. That's the question. Has Christ laid hold of you? You may not have been on the road to Damascus, but you were going nowhere fast. Been there, done that. He stopped me. He stopped me. And if he didn't stop you, you don't know him. Because you understand, all of us were just like Alexander the coppersmith. All of us were just like Saul of Tarsus. We withstood the words. We withstood the words of Christ. Until he stopped us. Until he stopped us. Here's the question. Has the Lord Jesus Christ gotten your attention? Because once he gets your attention, he's going to keep your attention. You're not going to be able to get away from him. Oh, I, mean, I, I was coming up the road this morning, and I got to thinking about this. You know, them fellows in the book of Acts, after Pentecost, when they were preaching, and there's one old Jew, there's one, I don't know, I guess he was old. Uh, I always consider all them people a high priest and all that. There was one with them in there, and he looked at him, and he said, listen. If God's in this, you don't want to oppose it. He told the absolute truth there. Because here's what he said. If God's in this, you can't stop it. And if God's not in it, it'll come to nothing. And that's true too. It's amazing how people, sometimes God will give them just that word of truth. And they don't even know they're talking it. Because if God is in this, you can't stop it. And if God is in this, you better not get in the way. Don't oppose. But if God's not in it, it's not going to come to a thing. Oh, but if he's in it, what did he say? My word. What are we talking about? Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. What? Greatly opposed our words. Okay. The word of God will never return unto him void. Now, it's going to accomplish exactly what he sent it forth to do. Now, if he sent it forth to harden your heart, that's what it's going to do. People don't like to talk about that. If he sent it forth to make Alexander the coppersmith mad, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. And if that very same word he sent forth at the very same time, what? Opened your eyes to see his glory. That's exactly what he meant it to do. And that's how, what does it say? We can be. We, actually the people of God, the preachers, the talkers, the proclaimers, can be at the very same time the savor of life unto life to some and the savor of death unto death for others. Because that is his word. It's going to have an effect. 
It's not going to return unto him void. It will accomplish everything he sent it to accomplish. And it did in the case of Alexander the coppersmith. Yes. And it did in the case of Saul of Tarsus. And it did in the case of all of you, every single person here, and whoever's listening. God's word always has the result he wants it to have. He's sovereign, and it's the truth. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful again to this time, this place. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for your glorious word that you have given to us. In your scriptures, through the, through the Holy Spirit, the words of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the words of your salvation, your power, your honor, your glory, now and forever. Help us as we go through this world to remember and to take heart that you are, oh, working out, working your will in this world. Be with Paul and Walter as they come to preach the gospel. Help us to lay it to our minds our thoughts and keep it hidden in our hearts thank you lord in christ's name we pray amen